Hey, what's going on everyone? Vega here for Serpent X Tech. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at how to set up your Bitcoin full node or to process transactions through your own local Bitcoin node. There's a number of reasons why you want to do this, but we're going to be taking a look at how to set up on the Sparrow wallet, uh, which is a Bitcoin wallet, as well as Ledger Live, which obviously can allow you to store multiple cryptocurrencies. But Bitcoin, we can connect to our full node which is going to be utilizing the future bit Apollo 1. Yes, the Apollo 2 is out, but both of them have either a standard edition that does not have a full node or a full node edition, and we're going to be connecting to our full node. Now, why would you want to do this? Well, when you interact with the Bitcoin network solely through using the wallet, uh, running your node act delivers privacy benefits and grants the abil ability to verify your transactions and Bitcoin's 21 million supply cap. So there are some strategic or inherent benefits of running your own transactions through your own node. I will link to the Bitcoin Man Magazine article in the description, as well as this one, which walks us through the Sparrow setup, but it's really super easy and you need to weigh out the pros and cons on whether or not you wanna do it. You may not have to. It may be as simple as just get a Coinbase account, buy some Bitcoin and hang on to it, but you're, you, you, the risk is you're relying on a centralized entity. Now we're using the future bit Apollo device. As I mentioned before, I covered this. I even showed you how to update the operating system from the legacy OS to the new one. The new one looks great. The future bit team did such a great job with it. And so the first thing is to get this node ready. Right. And what I mean by that is the machine we're going to be using to send or broadcast the transactions to our node. Right. Our node is going to be processing, syncing with the chain, all that stuff. This device, the device that I am recording this video on is going to be the one sending the transactions or interacting with the node. So I need to find out what the IP address is for this particular device. And to do that, there's a couple of different ways. I like Angry IP Scanner. You can log into your router. Otherwise, you can go to CMD and your start menu and then type in ip config now i'm not going to enter it because i don't want you to see my public ip address but when you're presented with this information what you're looking for is your lan or your local area network ip for the device that's going to be connecting to the full node once you have that information there's only a little bit that we need and what i mean by that is inside the settings of the apollo miner which this article goes through like the setup process and all that stuff on the sparrow but not the ledger there's only one key part that i really care about and that is where we need to tell the device in our configuration, hey, bind this IP. Hey, allow this IP. To do that in the new OS, all we got to do is go to settings, click on node, and you can see two things here. One, I'm connecting over Tor or the Onion Network, as well as allowing local area connections, right? Local area network connections. So those two things, um, well, at least one of them needs to be turned on. The other one, you don't have to use Tor if you don't want to, but it adds a little bit of extra layer of security and obfuscates uh, your identity, right? So we need to make sure down here at the bottom, we have RPC bind equals local IP and then RPC allow IP equals local IP, but also the IP address of the node or excuse me, the machine that's going to be um, allowing the transaction to go through. You can see here, not only do I have my node, but I also have the device sending the transactions to the node. So once you have that in there, you will have to save a little window will pop up if we make any changes let me see if what happens if yeah so see save and restart that will restart your node and then um, give it a minute your node does need to be synced up um, and note that the bitcoin blockchain is pretty big compared to other cryptocurrencies that don't require you to sync the entire chain right so you can see it takes up about 600 and almost 20 gigabytes of data or storage on your sd hard drive, whatever it might be. So just be mindful of that. If you do not have the space to maintain that, uh, just keep that in, uh, you know, aware or in the back of your mind. Additionally, you can see out of my one terabyte hard drive, I only have 30% free. So eventually I might have to upgrade as we continue, continue to move forward with the Bitcoin blockchain. But long story short, we just need to make sure the node is synced up. And then under the settings menu and node, we need to make sure that we have our RPC bind for our IP address, not only localhost, but the IP of the machine sending the transactions, as well as the node itself. So once you have that all configured, what wallets do you want to use? Now, there's no point in using Bitcoin Core, which is already a full node, to connect to another node. Now, you technically could do it. But that seems a little bit silly to me, and I will link to an article uh, where they tell you the commands and everything you need to do. 
but if, if I was going to run this full node or the Bitcoin core on this machine, I would just run my transactions through this one machine that we're on right now. The inherent risk with that is, is if this machine gets compromised, you know, somebody could infect my device uh, or maliciously take it over and then gain access to my Bitcoin tokens, whether it's the seed phrase or what have you. Uh, that's why they always uh, say to encrypt your wallet, but even those encryptions can be broken. No, instead, what we're going to do is we're going to use Sparrow. The Electrum wallet, by the way, does not work uh, because the way it interacts with the node, uh, it doesn't store it in the way that the Electrum wallet wants. So there's no point in that. The only one that I've seen work with this is Sparrow right now. But if you know of another wallet in which we can connect to our node, please let me know down in the comments below. But I know we can connect our Ledger Live, which I'm showing you, and the Sparrow wallet, which we already have moved on and downloaded it. Sparrow Wallet looks like this. Pretty simple, plain Jane. I got it opened up right here. You can download it, the, the correct one for your operating system, whether it's Mac, Windows, Linux, whatever you want. And here we are. We're just gonna go ahead and launch this baby and go through the setup process. It's gonna give you a little security warning whether you're on Windows 10 or Windows 11, but run anyway. Once that thing loads up, you'll see we're presented with some information. Right, so Sparrow's a Bitcoin wallet with focus on security and usability. It can uh, operate in both offline and online mode. The online mode, it connects to the server to display transaction history. And the offline mode uh, is useful as transactional editor and it's also an air gap multi sig connector. So great for hardware, I believe, hardware wallets. But um, we're just going to go ahead and hit next, uh, connect to public server. We could turn, we can, I think we can just go through the basic setup process. Um, and, and once we get through the basic setup process, I'll show you uh, the actual like connection of the full node. But let's just go ahead and blow through all this. Next, next, next. Connecting to Bitcoin node, so on and so forth. Next, configure server. So connect to private Electrum server, demonstration only. So connect server, configure server, I mean. And right here, we want to choose Bitcoin Core. And when we get Bitcoin Core, now we got to put in the IP address of our node. Now, again, this isn't the machine we're recording on. This is the one that's going to be the machine that's sending the transaction to Bitcoin uh, full node. We want the IP address of the node. You can see what that is because I'm actually logged into it. So whatever your future bit uh, Apollo 1, Apollo 2 node is, that's the one you want to use. So we just need to plug in that IP right now and then put in the port 8332. Some of the other wallets are going to say 8333. For example, if we scroll down the Ledger one, you see here localhost 8333. In this case, it's going to be 8332 for us. And then now we need to do user and password, and we need to go put in that username and password. Well, how do you obtain that? Well, if you go back to your device and you click connect right here, you will be presented with some information. Don't worry about the address. You just want to get the username and password. And if we scroll down here, it would actually tell us that the username is FutureBit. That's by default. And then the password is per device. So my device is going to be different from yours, which is going to be different from somebody else's. But FutureBit is the username. So let's plug that in. And then we want to get that password by clicking the connect button and going and grabbing it off the window that just pops up. All right. And once we have the password plugged in, let's double check. And the guide gives us all kinds of good information. But we're going to go ahead and test that connection, make sure everything is good. Make sure we can connect to the node. It's connecting. Boom. Batch RPC enabled. Server banner. It's already got everything good to go. So we can go ahead and create wallet or close. The article is going to tell you to close the wallet. But I'm going to go ahead and hit create. Just comes up with a window that I can't move. But basically, we're just going to give it a name. So Bitcoin test just for you guys. Create wallet. It's going to probably pop up with some information for me to connect. So i got a number of different ways to connect here. So single signature, multi-sig wallet, whatever you need to, native segwit, legacy, taproot, whichever you prefer. Defaults are the first two that you see here. Description, um, you know, and then we got, we could, we have a way to connect our hardware wallet. We got a way to air gap hardware wallet, uh, new or import software wallet, public key watch only, which, which means we're going to watch an address. We're not going to actually control the address, but we're going to watch an address. And then now we can go ahead and uh, complete the setup. In this case, we're going to choose new, right? And then we're going to do mnemonic 20. We can do 24 word, 12 word, whichever one you want. Scan QR code. So we're just going to choose 12 words. And we're going to create our own little 12 word seed phrase. Uh, generate new or enter an existing. So I really want to generate a new. So we're going to hit generate new. Boom. There it is. And it's going to ask us to confirm backup. 
and you can even import your Electrum wallet or another key, private key, whatever you need to. But we're just going to back these up somewhere nice and safe. Confirm backup. Make sure we have them written down. And then we're going to need to re-enter them. So let's go ahead and write those down real quick. Now re-enter the passwords in the exact order you wrote them down. Create key store. And now we should be able to import, apply, right? And we could even view the seed if we forgot it apply give it a password or we can leave it empty so we say no password for now and that's going to be the wallet that we use so now you can see all these buttons on the left opened up and now we can send and receive there's our receiving address if you guys want to send yourself some bitcoin because somebody's going to put that seed phrase they saw in their wallet but there's going to be no funds on it we can see our transactions all that stuff so the beautiful thing is is now we are connected via our full node right and we could see under the server tab, when we go to file settings, uh, we could see that we are connected to our device via that port number with the username FutureBit password. So the, this wallet, when we send and receive transactions, will be going through our own full node, which is connected over the Tor or Onion network. I absolutely love it. Great to see it. Now, Ledger is going to be a little bit different, but I already have it pulled up. First thing we want to do is obviously set up our, our FutureBit Apollo node the way we want to, right? Where we set up our RPC bond and all that good stuff, just in case this is on a different device. Then we need to go to our settings tab. You can click the gear wheel up here, go to experimental features, scroll on down, connect Bitcoin full node. We're going to click on connect and it's going to tell us everything. Start your full node. Don't trust. Verify Bitcoin full node validates all transactions and blocks, allowing you to use Bitcoin in a trustless way while contributing to the Bitcoin network. I love running full nodes. I love contributing to the network. Um, but yeah, so we will need our RPC credentials, IP address, and port number, which again, I will provide to you. It's just the basic IP, that username, future bit, and the password you would see on your device. And you can see here, it's only doing local host. Now, if I was connecting to Ledger Live through my Bitcoin Core wallet, then yeah, localhost 18332 would work just fine. In this case, it's not. We're going to be going through our Apollo full node. So let's go ahead and plug in that IP or whatever the IP is for it. And then we need to put in our username, which you saw earlier. It's FutureBit for all devices. And then that password that we grabbed earlier from the connect section. Don't need to check use TLS, uh, but hit continue. And now get your hardware wallet out and ready and connected to the device. You will need to enter your pin and unlock it because it is going to need to connect to your Bitcoin accounts. Full node connection successful, which is good. That means it's talking to the full node. No problem. Connect. And now it's looking at my accounts and it's asking how many accounts do you want to scan for each address type like SegWit, Taproot, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it on the default 10. But if you have a lot of addresses, you want to turn that up a bit. Um, but in this case, we're just going to hit continue. And then it's going to ask us to open up the Bitcoin app. We click our two buttons on whichever ledger version you have. Um, it's going to say getting accounts from the device. Please note something real quick. When you do actually connect this, it's going to take some time, first of all, to sync everything, your accounts, as well as uh, to sync up between the node and everything. But when you go to disconnect this, your account, your Bitcoin account will disappear from your ledger live. It does cause some people to panic and be concerned. However, if you just close out after you disconnect everything and you just close out the Ledger Live, you have your Ledger seed phrase backed up already, or you should. So you can just easily click Add Account and restore your Bitcoin accounts. But you can see accounts added to the node configuration. The configuration file was saved to your user data folder. And we can see that it actually goes into your username, app data, roaming, uh, roaming Ledger Live. And now we can go ahead and hit Continue. And now we need a third-party software called Download SatStack. Now, SatStack I already had open up right here. I'm just showing you it goes to the same place, where you, whether you click the one in the description or the one uh, provided to you by Ledger Live. You need to click the one you need for your operating system. Once you do that, you need to go to your download section, which we already have it in our downloads. And we need to go to that specific folder. And we're going to need to run this command, but not just double-clicking on it but actually running it through the command prompt. So we're going to let it sit on this window right here. We're going to open up command prompt CMD. Now on my Windows 11, when I right click a folder and I hit open in terminal, it opens up a PowerShell window, not a CMD window. Open up a command prompt window, okay? And now we're going to choose, we need to switch to our downloads. So we're going to CD, change directory, downloads. 
and then we're going to choose l or we're going to type in lss.exe and you're going to see it's going to start loading and it's going to start think, uh, syncing up with everything you're going to need to be patient before you come back to the ledger button and or the ledger live application and hit continue sat stack must be running for ledger live to connect to your full node consider setting it to launch automatically when your computer boots learn more and then this article will also be down in the description um basically it's the same one that i had up earlier where you just basically want to have uh you know kind of it run while your computer is online but i noticed as soon as i installed it and everything was good to go uh, it automatically synced right up every time or it was running every time I opened up the computer. But either way, lss.exe, hit enter. I'm in the wrong folder. I forgot to go one more folder in. So let's go ahead and grab this. So we're going to CD again, paste. Now we're in the right folder, lss.exe. And now it's running in the background. I already started it. But let me show you what it looks like. When it starts running... Basically, you're going to see like a timer, a countdown of some type um, that begins to happen. And you just need to let that get to 100% as the ledger wallet does show. And once it gets to 100%, uh, you could go ahead and just hit continue. You can see right now it said cannot reach the sat stack. is because the old one is still running and it's in the way. I disconnected this just for you guys to show you it. But basically, when you get to this point and you run that command, as I mentioned... You're going to see it going through, counting down, or going up, you know, 0.25%, 1%, 2%. It does take a while. Let that baby ride. Once that gets to 100%, then you're going to hit continue, and you'll be able to, uh, it will just automatically uh, continue to connect and work through your full node, okay? So as number seven says here on the article from Ledger, Wait for the progress loader to reach 100% and click continue or click continue and follow the progress in the experimental settings tab. Well, what happened is if I close this out, it changes to edit and I could always go back in here and edit, modify whatever I need to. Okay, but just know this is the thing that that scares a lot of people, but there's no reason to be afraid. When you hit disconnect, look at this warning. Are you sure disconnecting the full note will remove all Bitcoin accounts? You can add your accounts again using Ledger's Explorers. Cancel, disconnect. A lot of people get fearful of that. I disconnected it. I put the accounts right back in. Again, you have your seed phrases backed up. There's no reason to be afraid. But you can see right now that it can't reach the SAT stack. That's because I closed it. It's not operational since I restarted. So I just need to get back up and running and I will be able to synchronize my uh, node and the Ledger Live application together and I'll be able to send transactions from my Ledger Live through my Bitcoin full node. Just wanted to show you how long it took for this uh, device to sync up. About three days, two hours, 12 minutes and 36 seconds to sync up 100%. So now when we open up Ledger, um, it is synced up and operating or doing transactions through my node. So it does take a while. Again, just be patient. And that's going to do it for today's video. Thank you so much for sticking around all the way to the end. If you made it this far, let me know down in the comments. As you can see, the Apollo miners behind me are not even connected. And that's because the astute amount you or my subscribers, my community knows that lightning hit the house. So the full node is down. However, there's a box right behind me that we got the Apollo 2. Huge shout out to Futurebit for working with me. Uh, they provided me a unit. Uh, I did have to pay for it uh, at a discounted rate because I donated one of the original Apollo 1s to the Bitcoin Museum. My man there, the coin dad, really cool guy. But anyways, I already took up enough of your time. I hope you got some useful information out of this video. Do me a favor on the way out. Hit that like button. Get subscribed. Hit notification button to stay up to date as well. Check out additional links in the description that should uh, provide you additional support or information in these articles. Um, and just show uh, your support for the channel. And I'll catch you later on. Have a wonderful day. Take care.